thankful for Jesus tonight. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. I'm so thankful that he died on the cross to save me from my sins. How about you guys? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go ahead and get things started off tonight with everybody join in in a song. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet, grab your hymn book, and turn all the way over to page 438. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of My Country Tis of Thee, page 438. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims sprung from every mountain side. This time I have Brother JB come up and he's going to pray over our prayer list at this time. Good evening. Good evening. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you again for being able to come to our, to our throne this evening, Lord, and pray for the ones that sick and so on the bed of affliction. We pray, Heavenly Father, for this church. We ask you to bless it. We pray for our land, Lord, that we need to get on it. And, Lord, you know the, that you can get us on it, Lord, if we just put our faith in, in you and trust you. Because, Lord, that's our, that's our promised land that you've given us. And, Father, we pray for once that uh, on our prayer list, we pray for Brianna Baldrige, upcoming surgery. We pray for myself, Sheila Barker, Jenna Barrett, Irene Bell, Brenda Bryant, Aaron Barbara Clarkson, Jamie Cope, E.T. and Deborah Connor, Jean Connor, Kathy Crane with Radiation, Jack and Gail Dale, Donna Dalton, Scott and Scotty Dean, Linda Kildorm, Joe and Joyce Herb, Monica Green, Marion Emily Hamlet, Faith Ann Holly, April Henderson, Eugene Henderson, Janice Hodges, Pastor and Sister Hussey, Marion Johnson, Eston Lewis, Gerald Lewis, Shelby Martin, Angela Martin, Gary McClellan, John and Linda Mitchell, Angela Moore, Shoulder, Toby Moore, Linda Moorefield, Keith Moorefield, Marjorie Morris, Nancy Newton, Angela Oaks, Nathan Oaks, Donald Owen, Kathy Payne, Broken Ribs, Sherry Bobisky, Danny Ray, Robert and Vicki Reed, James Riverson, Bill and Judy Snow, Alan Taylor, Salem, Virginia, Eileen Tickle, Evelyn Wellington, Cancer, Family Lorraine Weaver, Nathan Wells, Cancer, Jimmy Williams, Stroke, Connie Wiles, Kelly Wood, Brandon Yancey back, Harold Yancey, Cindy Hill, Brett Fowler, Charles Wells, Health, Jeffrey Woman, Bypass Surgery, Lord, we ask you to bless each and every one name that we mentioned, Lord, you know their needs and you you know their sickness, and Father, we bring them before you tonight. And Lord, we know that these prayers will be answered because we believe they'll be answered because we believe with our hearts. And Lord, we pray for Brother Yancey. Preach this night. We ask you to give him the message that we need tonight. The message that was given this morning, Lord, we needed it at. And Lord, we just thank you for that. 
We thank you for the choir. We ask you to just continue to bless him. We pray for the hands of the Lord. Lord, we ask you to touch him. And Lord, we just love you so much. And Lord, we give you the praise of the Holy Spirit, Lord. We pray and we love him for our guidance and directions in that word and to help us through the days to come. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. to stand to our feet once again. We're all going to be joined into another song. Turn all the way over to page 435 this time. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of Oh Beautiful for Spacious Skies, page 435.
may be seated. At this time, we're going to uh, go over our announcements once again from this morning. If you got your bulletins, go ahead and get those out. We see that next week at this time, we'll have a bunch of young people here. We'll have bags packed, and we'll be heading out to camp next week. Amen? We ask you to please continue to pray. Uh, let's pray for more kids to be signed up, and I promise you the gospel will be taught and preached down there, and we're praying for souls saved to be li- and lives to be changed. Amen? All right. Evangelist Don Anderson will be with us preaching on Sunday, September the 1st. He'll be with us in the 11 o'clock hour and the 6 o'clock hour as well. Be in much prayer for that. And also Bible study will resume after camp on Tuesdays. Uh, there will be a men's prayer meeting on Monday, August the 5th. Brother Manny Graham will be the special speaker. And meeting out on the church land in the, <clears throat> the month of July will be a meeting on Thursday, July 18th. And Brother Stan Moorfield, he will be the special speaker. Looking forward to that. <clears throat> and at this time, we'll have our ushers make their way up to receive our Sunday night offering. And as they're making their way up to the front to receive the offering, let's remember that the white envelopes are in front of us uh, are for our tithes and offering. Tithes are 10%. And offerings because we love them. He's been too good to us. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful for all the Lord has done for us. And also, uh, if you uh, had those uh, brown envelopes in front of you, those are for our building fund. Uh, we got to get out there somehow, right? And it's going to take faithful people giving you time, talent, and treasures for God. And let's be sure to give down deep from our hearts each and every single chance that we can. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. And if you don't have cash or check in-house, Brother Ken Vipperman's in the back. He has a debit card and credit card machine if you'd like to give that way as well. And also, if you're listening by way of Internet and Eternal Broadcasting or Facebook Live, we're so thankful that you are here with us tonight as well. And if you'd like to give, you can give one of two ways. You can go to www.strengththeday.com, click on our secure link at the top, or you can give by way of mail. You can send it to P.O. Box 10004, Danville, Virginia, 24543. And at this time, we'll have Brother Sean Horvitt come up, and he's going to bless our offering tonight. Every head's about, every eyes closed. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness. Lord, I pray for the offering, Lord. I pray it to help further your kingdom. And Lord, anybody who's listening, anybody here tonight, Lord, just please help us continue to grow in the nurture and admonition of you so that we can be a light to all that are lost out there. And I pray for souls to be saved and lives to be changed today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for giving back to the Lord tonight. And also, let's give our instrumentals a hand. Amen. Thankful for their faithfulness. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles, please turn to Hosea chapter 2, verse 2. As Hands of Glory comes to perform tonight, uh, just an uh, uh, introduction for the song tonight. Um, it's, I, I say this every time we perform it. Uh, it's, it's true. This is one of my favorite songs, and it's a message that I wish the whole world could hear. You know, there's a Savior who died on the cross for our sins, you know, and being saved is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And I hope you guys can say the same thing. Amen. And uh, I just want to tell the whole world that they're never too broken to belong. And I want to encourage all of us, you know, if you're saved here tonight, you know how great it is to be saved. And let's go tell the whole world, you know. I've been reading in chapter, uh, in James, um, in the book of James, and just, you know, God's not a respecter of person. So who are you to judge who you lead to the Lord or who you show Jesus to? No, we need to show Jesus to every single person. And so let's just be, uh, let this song be an encouragement to you uh, to know and just go out and tell the whole world that they're never too broken to belong.
The door is open, come on in as you are. All you need to bring is what remains of your heart. I see the years of fear and pain on your face, but take a step, enter in. You are safe in this place. You're never too broken to belong. Never too wounded, never too far gone. Here you find Jesus and find your home. You're never too broken to belong. Come find the perfect love that no one deserves. A peace so sweet it can't be put into words. And grace that's greater than the darkest of sin. Taste and see, take his hand, let the healing begin. tonight say amen. amen never too broken to belong if you're listening by way of Facebook tonight take a minute to tell us who you are Ken and I look at numbers but numbers don't mean nothing but numbers do they Ken we want to know who's out there watching us we go back and we go after church we'll pull up Facebook and say I mean I think this morning I think we had 65 people watched online and I ain't got no idea who but two or three of them was. I want to know who you are. Say amen. amen. And where you're from and who's watching. So just leave us a note and say, uh, you ain't got to say nothing to me. Just please, Ken, say, hi, Ken. Tell them who you are and where you're at. And I know he appreciates it. Uh, I want y'all to take a minute tonight. And I, I just, sometimes we don't take a moment to stop and think what all it takes to do what we do here. Uh, this stuff just doesn't happen by accident. Uh, somebody's got to plan, somebody's got to prepare, somebody's got to produce. And, uh, you know, I saw all these fireworks up here. And I thought, I hope my outline gets up there. Everybody be watching the fireworks tonight. Instead of watching and listening to me preach. But I, don't get smart aleck with me back there. <laughs> I'm fixing to brag on you, and now you're getting ugly back there. I, I'm telling you. But anyway, uh, Ken takes time to do stuff like that for us. And nobody knows the hours Ken puts in back there. You don't know how many times uh, he gets emails from me changing the message at the last moment. Shut up, Ken. (laughs) 
and he has to redo the whole outline, redo everything because I had an idea in my head. But it takes a lot to do Facebook. It takes a lot to do these screens and keep up. And uh, he has to stay awake while I'm preaching. That's a job in itself, just staying awake. And then uh, the... See, now I forgot what I was going to say. I was going to brag on Diane. See, you better to make me mess up so I can't brag on Diane. And what she did with the choir this morning for the 4th of July, that was a blessing. And <laughs> there shall be showers of blessings. <laughs> now I forgot where I was going with after Diane. But anyway, I was coming to church tonight to listen to Eternal Broadcasting, which I'm telling you, that is one of the best ministries we've got and the least used in this church. I'm just being honest with you. We need to listen to eternal broadcasting. Jamie actually woke up long enough to do something special today. He put in an hour-long patriotic special on uh, Southern Gospel Weekend, and I actually enjoyed myself. I'm the host, dummies. But anyway, I actually enjoyed, I actually enjoyed myself on my own broad, and even enjoyed a little bit of Jamie while he was on there. But it's just so many things that go on around here. You know, we need to be thankful for each other because it takes a team. It does not take a village. Don't you give Hillary Clinton no credit. It takes a church. It takes a team to do what we do here at Timberlake Baptist Church. And uh, so let's be thankful for each other. Take your Bible and turn to Hosea 2.2. We said this morning that Hosea, his name means salvation. And he was going to be Gomer's salvation in the end of this thing, in the end of this story. And we looked at two reasons for God. Well, one reason. We're going to get to the second one tonight. Two reasons for God's strange command. The experimental reason was to parallel between God's love for Israel and Gomer's or rather, Hosea's love for Gomer. He wanted him to parallel those two together so that Hosea would understand how God felt when Israel turned their back on him and went into idolatry and went back into sin. And uh, so he wanted that to parallel. That was the reason for this story. Then secondly, now some of y'all are going to say he's preaching the same thing he preached last week, maybe, but there's a purpose in this thing. I taught you last week. God will bend you, God will break you, and if he has to, God will bury you. And that's a true fact. I taught you biblically where that come from last week. Now this week, and, and I didn't plan it this way. Ken will tell you, uh, I did not plan this this way. It's the way God did it. This week you're going to see in the story of Gomer and Hosea how that works and how God implemented that. Because you don't know how many preachers have got in my face saying you ought not say that. Why? It's biblical. It's the truth. When people don't want to hear the truth, it's usually because they're in the middle of falsehood. Say amen. amen. So tonight we're going to look at the illustrative reason for the story of Gomer and Hosea. To Gomer and Israel, God wanted them to know he was holy, he was righteous, and he's a jealous God. You know how many people preach on that last one? They'll preach on that holiness of God. They'll preach on the righteousness of God. But they don't say much about that jealous part because it's stronger than the other two put together. Because you belong to him. And if you belong to him, you ain't going far. He'll give you enough rope to hang yourself. But you're not going to get away from him. You belong to him. You belong to the Lord. And that's possessive. Gomer, Hosea's own marriage, rather, to Gomer, would be a walking invisible example of God's relationship with the nation of Israel. God still loves Israel. They're still God's chosen people. The church is the vehicle carrying the gospel on but don't you believe this lie and this false doctrine they've got going on now that the church has replaced Israel? That is absolute false doctrine. 
Now, the church is doing the work Israel should be doing. The church is going on with the gospel when Israel rejected the Savior. But they are still God's chosen people. In the book of Hosea, God constantly refers to the northern kingdom. And if you don't get this, you're going to miss the whole story. When you see Ephraim mentioned in the book of Hosea, it's the northern kingdom. It's the northern kingdom. And it's evident in the book of Hosea that Gomer was, uh, well, let me back up here. Ephraim uh, was the first of the 12 tribes to backslide on God. Understand that. They were the first of the 12 to backslide on God. Now, my wife's been trying to figure out the 12 tribes of Israel, and she's done about drove me nuts. <laughs> trying to figure out where all 12 of them come from. So she's finally figured it out. So maybe that's why I feel so good today. I ain't got that stress on me no more. But the first... Israel, the nation, the first, see, you done messed me up. The first tribe to backslide on God was Ephraim. So in the story of Hosea, every time you see Ephraim, it's talking about the northern kingdom. Now, it's evident in the book of Hosea that Gomer was a prostitute before she married him and before they came together as husband and wife. And after they got married, she became an adulterer. She was, she was a fornicator before, an adulterer afterward, after they got married. She was a M-E-S-S mess. She had a messed up life and a messed up heart. And, he, and God asked that the firstborn son of those two, Jezreel, to be named Jezreel. Hosea chapter 2, verse 2. Plead with your mother. Plead, for she is not my wife. This is Hosea talking to uh, Jezreel. For she's not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breast. She had loved Hosea properly as a wife. She had produced children for him, but now she had gone astray. I could sit here tonight and speak for five hours on my 40 years as a pastor. How many good people I've saw get saved, get baptized, start winning people to Jesus, living for God, making a difference in the world they lived in. And all of a sudden, it come to a screeching halt. Tell me, preacher. And they fall away from God back into sin. And they break God's heart and they ruin their lives going back to the old life instead of going forward in the new life. Either go for the devil for everybody in this building and watching online and even those who are not here and are not watching. His goal is to get you to go back to the old life. To go back to the old life and destroy you. And every time a Christian backslides on God and goes back to the old life, it's a humiliation to God. And Satan laughs. You call them a Christian? You say your blood washed them away from sin? Look what I did. I got them to go back to what they used to be. That's an insult to Jesus Christ. Is it not? It's an insult. And she had abandoned the relationship between her husband and her and invested her life in people who did not really love her for fully, who, for fully who she was. And I want to tell you something. You may think these people in the world love you. Oh, they love me. They're my friends. They're going to be the first ones to abandon you the first time trouble comes along. And you can say what you want to about the church of the living God. No church is perfect. You're in it. No such thing as a perfect church. But I want to tell you something. God's people ought not let each other down. We ought to love each other and care for each other. But she turned back. She abandoned. And now Hosea is trying tried to bar her from the marketplace, from the red light district. I don't know much about Danville and that, but I know in Lynchburg, 5th Street was a red light district. You didn't get caught on 5th Street because that's where all the prostitutes were. And that's where they still are to this day. I'll never forget, as long as I live. I got up one morning, that's back when you got a newspaper. 
You don't get newspapers anymore. I opened up the newspaper and the headlines, man arrested for soliciting prostitution on Fifth Street. I said, wow, somebody was crazy. And then I looked and he was a member of my church. <laughs> Done locked him up, put him under the jail, and the preacher was reading the headlines. I ain't never been so shocked in all my life. I had to start a jail ministry right away. I had to start a jail ministry instantly. I mean, folks, listen. The world will tell you, oh, you deserve a little sin. You deserve a little pleasure. But they don't tell you the hook in it's going to cost you everything you've got. Everything you have. Look at Hosea 2.6. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not Find her paths. This is eternal security in the book of Hosea. It's taught right here. Because if you're born again and you're truly saved, and you decide you're going to backslide, I've had people argue with me, there ain't no such thing as backsliding. It's in the Bible. Read the book of Hosea. Backsliding means to go back to the old life after you've been born again. And this is the perfect story here. If you're truly saved, you might backslide, but you ain't going to stay there long. You're not going to stay there long because God's going to hedge up your way. He's going to make your path thorny and thistly and stop you from doing everything you think you want to do because you belong to him. And he's going to bend you. He is going to bend you. And he's going to bring you back to himself one way or another. And folks, you study the book of Hosea. If you'd like to, i got a whole set of commentaries I wrote on the book of Hosea. And I go into backsliding and a backsliding heifer. Do you know what a backsliding heifer is? It's not your wife. Don't you say that. You'll end up in the dog hairs. You'll end up eating dog food for six weeks. A backsliding heifer is a cow that decides it doesn't want to do what its master wants to do. Sometimes cows has got more sense than humans. And they know when they get loaded up, they're going somewhere they don't want to go. And when they decide to come off of that thing and they uh, not go up in that thing, they lay down on you. And they are backsliding down the slide. And you're trying to get them to go up in the truck. They done made their mind up. They not doing what you want them to do. My, one of my members used to work at a cow farm at Sweetbriar in Amherst. And I'd watch them, them cows. Some of them would just go right along and get on up in that truck. But then there were some cows done been around a while. I said, I ain't coming back, Jack. I ain't getting in that truck. I'm going to a plate. And they would lay down. And it'd take four grown men to get that cow up and in that truck because that, that thing done backslid and decided it won't go up that ramp. They'd actually go ahead, some of them get a taser and shock that thing, make it jump up, and then they'd push it up in the truck to get that thing in the truck. Folks, the devil wants you to backslide on God. He doesn't want you to go where God wants you to go and do what God wants you to do. And, and Gomer didn't want to go home to her husband. But Hosea loved Gomer. And he said, bless God, I'm going to fix it so she's uncomfortable. I'm going to hedge up her way. I can hear him now. She's down there at the red light district walking around sashaying, trying to sell herself into sin. And somebody come up and proposition her and Hosea stand up behind a tree. He said, hey, you. That's my wife you messing with. Now how long do you think he's going to stand there and talk to her? I suspect Gomer was pretty hot with Hosea because he hemmed her way up. He fixed her so she couldn't do what she wanted to do. Hey, she was his wife and he had a right to do what he did. Amen, Amen or oh me. And if you're a saved Christian, you're bought with a price. And God has a right to hem up your way. I've had so many Christians come in my office and say, Preacher, I, I just can't get ahead in life. I thought, really? 
have you stopped and think about how you're living? You're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing the other, and you're not serving God. Of course your life's a mess and you can't go anywhere. You're backsliding. You're going back to the old life and the old way of doing things. And God can't bless you when you've determined you're not going to go where he wants you to go. Because the, the story of the Bible is the Lord leads and we follow. We trust and obey and he leads the way. And if you don't trust him and follow him and obey him, he can't get you where you need to go. And I want to tell you something, folks. There's, no, there's nothing for you back in the old life. You'll say, hey, things were easier when I, I was lost. Well, of course they were because you were lost and you didn't have an enemy. Now that you're saved, you've got somebody who hates your guts and doesn't want you to go where God wants you to go because if you go where God wants you to go, somebody's going to get saved. Somebody's life's going to get changed. <clears throat> so he's going to do everything within his power to pull you back and make you backslide. And Gomer just won't. How many times have I heard a Christian say, I'm just not happy. And I take my King James Bible and I turn around and slide it across that desk. And I say, there are 66 books right there. You show me which one in that book says that God said he wanted to make sure you was happy. And you know, I ain't never had nobody, Brother JB, yet open that thing up and show me where God wanted them to be happy. Now, he wants you to be joyful, but you can be joyful and not happy. I got news for you. Hey, you might be in, a, in a, the trial of your life, the trouble of your life. You didn't cause it. Okay, you weren't backsliding, you are just living for God. And the devil pours the pressure on. The devil's trying to get you to quit on God and quit on your church or maybe quit in your marriage or quit on your children. That's pressure, folks, like you've never known in your life. And you are not going to be happy in the midst of a trial. But you can be joyful knowing that in just a little while this trial is going to be over because God's going to get tired of what the devil's doing, going to whoop the devil and set you free. If you can't say amen right there, we ain't going home tonight. Thank God joy comes in the morning. Joy comes the next day. It's not, everything's not going to be peaches and cream and roses. There's, we're not in a cakewalk, my friend. We're in a war. Now, if you live for the devil and do what he wants you to do, everything's going to be smooth as peanut butter. Until it's too late. Until it's too late. Now, folks, forcing her to stay at home did not work. Now, as a pastor, I had to learn something as a young man. <laughs> you laugh at me, I'm going to come down there and whoop you in front of everybody. I, I had to learn this as a young man. I, I've been taking these notes for years. This is not the first place I ever circle names people come in. I did in every church I've been in. I have a role, and I take that role. Poor Jesse Mills sitting back out for years, circling names for me, keeping a roll. So on Sunday morning, I'd be able to contact everybody didn't come, let them know we missed them. But I, that was after I had grown up. There was a time I was stupid. Don't you say amen right there? You ain't said it all night. <laughs> me and old Percy don't go to hobos. Hobos was a buffet, what had fried chicken. Fried pork chop. Lord have mercy. Let's call it now fine hobos. Mashed potatoes, green beans, manor pudding. Me and Percy, after church on Sunday morning, we'd go to hobos and we'd eat. And then we'd go visiting. I learned real quick, you don't go on visitation on Sunday afternoon. Don't you laugh at me. I found out on Sunday afternoon, lights was on, but nobody was home. Stereo's on, nobody's home. Food cooking on the stove, I see the steam coming up off the stove. Nobody answered the door. Why? Because they say, the preacher's out there, be quiet. We didn't go to church this morning, he's trying to find us. I, I told you not to laugh at me. <laughs> hey, and, I, and, and nobody was ever home on Sunday afternoon. The lady wrote a poem, I got it in my office back there. When I, when I resigned from Central and went home to my home church, <laughs> it went like this. 
how did it go? It says, on Sunday afternoon, Lord have mercy, here come the preacher with his sidekick Percy. <laughs> lady wrote it did because I'd been to her house and knocked on the door, say amen or oh me. Where are y'all at? You can't force people to serve God. If I could, I would. I can't, so I ain't. Now, you can love them to serve God. I had to learn that. I had to learn that the hard way. So, see, y'all have benefited from some other church's turmoil. Amen or oh me. He couldn't force her to stay home. She left anyway. She was determined to fulfill the lust of her flesh. Yet Hosea did not give up there. He was determined to have what was his. He was going to make her <clears throat> uncomfortable in every way that he possibly could. Embarrass her, chase her, whatever it took. He wanted her back home. Now I'd say that was real love. Say amen or oh man. Most men would say, you piece of trash, you, you just go on, I'm going to divorce you and find me somebody else. That's what they'd say. That's what one, some women would say about their husband. You piece of trash, you. You just go on down the road. I won't undo you. But not Hosea. He loved Gomer. And let me tell you tonight, God loves you. And if you're his, he is not going to let you go back to the old life. He's going to get what's his. And he's going to chase you, and he's going to come after you. I'll never, I've told this, before. I'll tell it real quick. Some of you need to hear it, some of you sleep. But when I was a teenager, guy down the street, the man had brought me to church and led me to the Lord one Sunday afternoon. He'd come up to the house and says, me and my wife going to see 9 to 5 with Dolly Parton. <laughs> you want to go? What 12, 14, 15-year-old boy in the world don't want to go see a Dolly Parton movie? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm glad to go with you. I jumped in the car. He said, I said, wait a minute, I got to get some money. He said, don't worry about that. I'll pay you away. I said, glory to God. I was shouting praising God, fixing to see him. Got it? You can think you're right with God, and you ain't nowhere near God. Matter of fact, you're getting in a car going the wrong way. I got to the movie house. The line was a mile long at the mall to go see, nine to five. And I got in line, and I turned around, and I turned ghost white. There was a deacon at the church at the end of the line. I hid behind Joe Allgood. She was taller than I was. She was the woman and husband what brought me. And I didn't move and I because I didn't want that thinking to see me at the nine to five. And, and when they paid the ticket, I slid around them and got in fast as I could for the deacon seeing me at nine to five. Marshall Allgood said, what's wrong with you, boy? Why are you so nervous like a worm in hot ashes? I said, the deacon from the church is in the back of the line. I don't want him to see me. He said, son, forget it. God done saw you, me, and her, and him too. <laughs> done seen all of you in line. Should have been at church praising God. You watching Dolly Parton 9 5. I, didn't, I couldn't tell you what happened in that movie to this day if I had to. Because my nerves was tore up the whole time in there. I should be at church. I should be at church. My, I was under conviction. God said, oh, big boy, I, you ain't going to enjoy none of this. And I didn't. Didn't enjoy a minute of it. Tore my nerves up. Folks, while he was going to, going to make her uncomfortable. Thorns to inflict pain. Walls to provide frustration. He did all within his power to hinder her from going where she wanted to go and doing what she wanted to do. God even had Hosea name her children prophetic names. Had to, had to tore her nerves all to pieces. Every time she called her child's name, it was a godly name. Think about them apples. She was uncomfortable. And he turned her around. Now, I'm not going to get all this in tonight, so we'll go one more and we'll quit. Don't you say amen right there because you're hurting my feelings. 
God will bend you to get your attention. Jezreel meant to be scattered. Every time <clears throat> she said, Jezreel, she had to stop and think that means they were scattered away from God, scattered to the wrong places of the earth. Had to make her think, because names in those days meant something. I'm scared to find out what Walter means. Don't go look it up. I don't want to know. But names back in those days meant something. Today it doesn't mean anything. Hosea 1 4. Then the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And I will come to pass it that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of what? Jezreel. Scat. You know what happened to Israel when they were bent and he broke them and they still wouldn't listen? He scattered them to the four winds. You know what happened after they crucified Jesus? The nation of Israel got scattered all over. Everywhere you go, in every country of the world, there's a Jewish group of Jews in some country because they got scattered everywhere. Scattered because they wouldn't stay with God. God cannot let sin just go unpunished or not dealt with. Jesus shed his blood to deal with your sin. God cannot just let us waste the precious blood of Jesus that he offered. He was going to make Israel's way thorny, hedge up Israel's way to halt them from their selfishness. When you read the book of Ezra and you read the book of Jeremiah, you see a group of people that had been bent and broken and we're glad to get back home. They rebuilt the walls. They rebuilt the temple. They were thankful for the God that scattered them and put them in captivity because he gave them what they wanted. And let me tell you something. When you get what you want, it may not be what you want when you get it. It may be worse than you ever imagined. Sin takes you to the valley. It never takes you to the mountaintop. He said, I'm going to break them in the valley of Jezreel. You don't ever... Hey, sin never takes you to the mountain. It always takes you to the valley. This is speaking of how Israel would be scattered by the evil king Jehu. Jehu killed the northern king Jehoram and Judah's king Ahaziah, both in the same day. Both in the same day. He killed both kings. Ahab's 70 sons were killed by Jehu. Jehu killed the royal princes of Judah. And he also killed all the prophets of Baal. Jehu is no doubt a picture of Satan, who is a murderous, villainous, evil, wicked being, and will kill all in his pathway. Let me tell you something. He didn't care if they were Jews. He didn't care if they were not Jews. He didn't care where they come from, if they worship God or worship Beth. He killed them all. You know, there's a man on the horizon going to do the same thing in just a little while. His name's Antichrist. And he's going to kill them all. They believe in God, he's going to kill them. They believe in him, eventually he wants them dead too. Because the devil doesn't want you to live through anything. He wants you to die. He wants you to die. Friend or foe alike, he killed them all. This was the warning to Gomer, your friend today, your murderous enemy tomorrow. The prophecy was proven true to the end of Jehu's grandson's reign, Jeroboam II. Assyria then invaded the northern kingdom, and he scattered everybody in the northern kingdom that God was trying to bring back to him. He'll bend you, he'll break you, and if he has to, he'll put you in slavery, he'll scatter you to the four winds of the sun. I lied, go to B. Ain't the first time, won't be the last. Don't you say nothing, you've known me more than anybody else. I won't talk about Wendy, I was talking about dry fork back there. <laughs> B. God will break you to show you admonition. The second child was a little girl named Lu, uh, Lo Ruhama. 
Thank you for not naming your children Lohu Rama. That's a hard one. It means no more mercy. What did I preach on this morning? Mercy. There comes a time if you don't listen to God, he's, his patience is going to wear thin and he's not going to show us mercy anymore. He's going to whoop the tar out of us. I get so frustrated some Christians living backslidden on God come to me, oh, preach, I'm in such a trial. You're not in no trial. The Lord's beating your pants off. That's that delusion Satan puts in your head. You know when God's whooping you. My mama had a belt whooping me. I didn't run around telling people, oh me, I'm in such a trial. No, my mama was whooping me because I'd done something stupid. I disobeyed her voice. I didn't listen to her. Hosea 1.6. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, call her name Lo-Ruhamah. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them what? Away. Away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, the southern kingdom, and I will save them by the Lord their God, and I will not save them by bow, or by, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. This meant that God's judgment was just around the corner which was coming an invasion of the northern kingdom by Assyria. Go check your history books. Assyria come in and scattered the northern kingdom and took them into slavery. We well, say, so who was Assyria? Nebuchadnezzar. That's who it was. And they went into captivity. I lied again. See, God will bury you in your own admonition. I'm sorry, abomination. Then she bore a third son named Loami. Loami means not my people. I want to tell you something. There's no sadder time in life than when your family turns their back on you. Am I right? Let me tell you one instance worse than that is when God says, you've gone so far away from me, you're not even my people anymore. I won't, never want God to say that about me. He may have. And I hope I got right with God and didn't uh, uh, disappoint him anymore because I don't want him to say that about me. I want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I want him to bless my life and help me serve him. Hosea 1, 9, we'll go home. Then said God, call his name Loami, for ye are not my people. And I, listen, I will not be your God. That doesn't mean he forsook them. It means he took his hand off of them because that's what they wanted. He gave them what they wanted. Jezreel, God will bend you. Lo Ruhama, God will break you. Lo Ami, God will bury you and scatter you if that's what you choose. If you refuse to return from your backslidden ways, he will turn you over to Satan for destruction. Read your New Testament. It said in the New Testament, Paul said, and we turn them over to Satan to buffet their bodies because they would not obey the voice of the Lord. He will leave you alone and let you walk in the pathway of your own destruction. Your choices have consequences positive if they're right and negative if they're wrong. The Bible, Old Testament, New Testament bears this out without question. So preacher, what are you trying to say? Find real love with God. Just fall in love with him. You'll never get in trouble following God. Never. When I was young, if Ruby wanted to take me somewhere, Mama said, yeah. If Tom wanted to take me somewhere, my mama said, yeah. My Uncle VT won't take me somewhere? Yeah. Ed Neural? Yeah. Calvin? Yeah. Harlan Dyer? You ain't going nowhere, boy. Sit down. <laughs> Am I right, Dry Okay. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. 
she knew my cousins was the same age I was and as stupid as I was. <laughs> Who in the devil puts fire and dynamite together? Somebody stupid. Somebody dumb. I'm promising you tonight, and you young people getting ready to go to college better listen to me well. Yeah, I'm talking to you back on the back row. I'm looking right at you. Don't turn around and look back when I'm talking to you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You'll never go wrong with the Lord. You go with the world, you're going wrong. You're going to mess up. But if you walk with God hand in hand, stay with him everywhere you go. This is all of us. You'll find real love that you don't want to let go of. You'll find a God that will never leave you nor forsake you. You'll find a God that cares for you more than you care about anything else in this world. I end my message the way I started this morning. Greater love hath no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. Every head's bowed and every eye's closed. Jezreel, God will bend you. Lurahama, God will break you. Loami, God will bury you. Tonight, it's important for you and I to walk and follow our example. Follow and walk after the Lord's example. Hold him hand in hand. It is so easy to backslide on God. There's not a person in here who hadn't done it. There's not a person that's not capable of doing it right now because that's life. All I'm trying to teach you folks is stay close to God. Stay in church. Stay in the Bible. Stay on your knees. Stay out of sin. Don't follow people who are lost. Follow the Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Be obedient to the Lord and trust Him with all your heart, soul, and mind. Tonight, maybe you just need to come and say, Lord, I want to love you more than I ever have before. You're so easy to adore. Lord, I want to love you more. Just come tell him. Just come talk to him. Draw nigh to God, James says, and he'll draw nigh to you. So tonight, it's important that we learn to draw nigh to God. It's hard to discipline ourselves to be close to God, but it's possible. When we get done with this story, it's going to have a happy ending. But it took a long time to get there. It took a long time for Gomer to come home. Don't be Gomer. Don't be Gomer. Be Hosea. Stay home with him. Stay nigh to him. And I guarantee you, God will lead you where you need to go and help you do what you need to do. And he'll bless you. And he'll make much of your life. He'll take you a lot farther than you ever thought you could go. But you have to hold his hand and walk with him. You're here tonight, you've never been saved. Today's the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Brother Aston, standing right here. In just a moment, you can come down and I'll take him by the hand. He'll just want to take the Bible and show you how to be saved tonight. Stand to your feet. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Father, take this invitation tonight. God, I pray in Jesus' name, God's people will just come say they love you and ask you to continue to love them and take the Lord by the